Hey, it was good. It's your Joyce and Eric's sister, Joey, and today, we are going to be rating every single FNAF game that I know exists according to my knowledge, aside from the Sandverse games, which are not in here, because they're not officially by the real Scott Cawson or Steel Studios, but, uh, we'll do that separate video. So today, we're just going to be doing the main FNAF games, including some of the spin-offs they made, like Freddy in Space 2 or FNAF World. Uh, so yeah, let's just get right into it, and we're gonna go from bottom to top. We're gonna go from least favorite to most favorite, alright? Alright, let's start in the mid-tier. FNAF AR Special Delivery. Where do I start with this one? <laughs> Special Delivery? Think of it as... The FNAF version of Pokemon Go, but without Pokeballs, and you can't fight other animatronics with your animatronic. Although, that would be fucking awesome! But, that will be too much like Pokemon Go, where I guess, uh, Illumix would get ripped off for, for that. But hey, Illumix is already going through some legal issues right now anyway, so no, that that's not gonna happen, no matter what. But anyways, uh, the reason why this is at the bottom is because it is a cool concept, it is a cool concept, but it can get boring over time. It's like your average mobile game where you, like... Capture different things, if that makes sense. Uh, sure, you can find different skins of them, they look cool, they overdid spring trap with some of the skins or whatever with that, uh, Pennywise spring, tra spring trap, but uh, whatever, that's fine. Uh, it's at the bottom of the list, because comparing to all the other FNAF games that were made, it's just, yeah, FNAF AR just exists. Alright, let's go up a little bit. Freddy in Space 2, this is the... I hadn't seen much of this at all, but I'm pretty sure this was for, like, a charity stream event that several FNAF YouTubers were doing, like, Doco, uh, Game Theory, uh, I, I want to say DJ Sturf was a part of it too, but I'm not sure, uh, maybe Markiplier, I don't know, but, basically, it's, uh, like Freddy in Space from FNAF World, but upgraded, and you are, like, on this quest. To, I forgot what the plot was, but I think Freddy was trying to save his son from something. I don't know, but it's your average little, like, side-scroll shooter game. It's like uh, some of the games I used to play as a kid. It's not exactly a FNAF game, per se, uh, gameplay-wise, but it is pretty cool for uh, what it is. And also, I really like that uh, Gawko boss battle. <laughs> that was awesome. As the poop it, the bloody poop it. Alright, now we're in the cool tier. Fury's Rage! This is a beat em up game where you have to like punch all the bad guys coming your way and you play as the glam rock animatronics. This game was made as a I'm sorry, uh, because Security Breach wasn't out yet at this time. It had like six months to go before it's a release. Uh the reason why this is at the bottom of cool tier is because of only one thing. It's in part 3, in like level 3, the third level of this, there's like a part right before the boss battle where these like puppets, like uh, several different like uh, puppets like come after you and they would just like shock you in place or whatever. If you know, you know. If you know, you know. Alright, let's go up a bit. <coughs> Squeeze me. FNAF 3! <sighs> FNAF 3 is the third installment in the Five Nights at Freddy's series. Uh, and this is the only FNAF game where there's only one animatronic. People are still debating if, like, the Phantoms are considered animatronics or not, but I don't consider them as animatronics personally. I think they're just hallucinations to be there because the vent is, like, shutting or whatever. So, you gotta deal with Springtrap, you gotta use audio lures to, like, lure uh, him in different areas and stuff like that. It, it's like, a unique concept, but it's, like... Like, the entire premise of the Five Nights of FNAF 3 is a boss battle, essentially. But it progressively gets harder the more times you do it. Alright. 
Oh yeah, and I also have a lot of nostalgia for the vibe of this game too. Like it was the FNAF 2, FNAF 3, FNAF 4 era that I loved. I, that's what I grew up in. I also grew up in like the sister location times and stuff like that. More on that later. And uh, now further up in the list, we got Security Breach. FNAF 6. Okay, so uh, higher up we're go okay, Fuck that. Next on the list, we got FNAF 6. FNAF 6 has a interesting ending where all the last spirits are put to rest by uh, Henry's trap under the pizzeria he made. It's like a, it was like an illusion to gather the last haunted animatronics into one area, and then he would set it on fire to set their souls to rest. Little did know that wouldn't work so well, but anyways, uh, FNAF Security Breach Ruin! I already made a few videos on this, so I'm not really gonna talk about much or at all, so if you wanna know why I think it's just okay, you can watch those two videos I made, but let's go up to the, to the highest point of the cool tier. <laughs> Sister Location! It has very limited gameplay. I'm gonna say that right now. What's FNAF without gameplay? The only real gameplay comes in, in like, the enter the boss fight area in the fake ending pass. And I have such nostalgia for this game, it's insane, like... I remember, like, uh, being hyped for, like, the teasers of this game and stuff like that. It was awesome. I was really new to the FNAF fandom when Sister Location was being developed. But, in the meantime, I looked back at the other four games and stuff like that, including FNAF World, and I thought that was awesome. <laughs> So, in Sister Location, you play as, uh, Mike, who is down in the Sister Location, who has to repair the animatronics, has to do maintenance, so they can be ready for the show in the morning at a different location or stuff like that. Basically, what this place is, it's like a party and rental station. This is, like, where the animatronics are stored at, so, uh, people can rent them for, uh, private parties and stuff like that. And, just on a side note... I don't know why people uh, thought this was going to be what Sister Location was about, but apparently before Sister Location came out, people thought that these animatronics were fucking strippers or something. Like, they thought this was like an NSFW game that Scott was making, but nah, he just told us that, so we're all good. Alright, the Pog tier. FNAF VR Help Wanted. It features every single FNAF game in there, almost, and it has really put a lot of theorization into us, like it really put a stump in like map hat, if you know what I mean. And this is also the first FNAF game of the second saga of FNAF, which is what we're in right now, with like, Security Breach and Ruin and stuff like that. Uh, there's also, ex there's also like, uh, ex uh, extra content, like in the DLC, with like, Curse of Dreadbear and stuff. Uh, this is, we get to see how Vanny was formed, uh, we don't ever get to see Vanny that much, unfortunately, but let's hope Steel Wool patches that in Security Breach later on. Alright, later up in the list, we got Ultimate Custom Night. It, this is, this is pretty much the final send-off of the first saga of FNAF, basically the, the end of the Click Team games. And this is the, this is the game that, that really like rounded up every FNAF animatronic up until FNAF 6 all together, which is really cool. Alright. Oh yeah, and Doggo beating 50-20 mode was insane. I, some other YouTuber did beat 50-20 mode uh, before him, but I forgot who it was, but whatever, no one cares about that guy. Okay, uh, FNAF World. This game is highly underrated, and I love it, okay? I never played it before. Actually, I 
The only SNAP games I ever played was the one through Sister Location. And I haven't even beat Night for Sister Location. Uh, but judging from watching someone play the game, I already know how epic it is to play the game, if that makes sense. Like, I can judge just based off of that, because I've seen gameplay of, like, other games before, and I played those myself, and it was, like, the same or whatever. So, yeah, FNAF World, it's a fun game. I, I love it. Like, it is underrated, and I get why people don't like it. It's because it's not scary or not, like, the source material of what FNAF is, but I, I like it. It's a fun little, uh, game. It's, uh... It's mostly not canon, although some parts of it is, apparently, but uh, we're not going to theorize into that. Okay, uh, next on the list, we got FNAF 2. This is the highest in the POG tier. Alright, so FNAF 2, it's crazy, it's fucking chaotic, but almost every animatronic is exactly the same gameplay-wise. You just put on the mask and they go away. The only animatronics that are different are Golden Freddy... Wait, no. I think Golden Freddy is the same as them. Okay, the only animatronics that are different is... The Puppet, Foxy, and... The Easter Egg animatronics that don't jump scare you, and that's really it. Alright. That, that's all I gotta say for FNAF 2. No comment. Let's go into the final tier that has my favorite two FNAF games of all time. W. FNAF 1. I mean, come on, you already know, you already know, right? Like, it's simple, it's fun, it, the gameplay can vary depending on what your situation is. That's true with almost every FNAF game, but FNAF 1 takes the cake on that. It's amazing, it's fun, it's scary, legitimately. It, it's, it's just fun to play in your free time. I actually play FNAF 1 and the next game I'm going to be talking about, uh, like, on a daily day basis sometimes, uh, when I'm bored or whatever, just because they're fun like that. <sighs> but yeah, FNAF 1's the OG FNAF game. It was going to be the last game that Scott Cawson would ever make before retiring, but... He decided to make FNAF a series after FNAF 1, which is, I'm really thankful for. So, thank you, Scott Cawson, for that. Alright, now we're at my number one favorite FNAF game. You probably already know what it is, because I haven't fucking mentioned it yet. Horror, horror. It's FNAF 4. FNAF 4. Where do I go on this? I love the creepy red atmosphere. I love that... I love the designs of the nightmares. I love, like, the entire game mechanics. I, I'm, i like, the only person who, like, loves the gameplay. I love, like, the risk of checking down the spooky, like, doorway into nothingness. And, I, and being afraid if there's, like, something there or not. I love having to listen for the animatronics. I actually unironically like the consequence of... You making a mistake in the jump scare is, like, really loud or whatever, you know? And I heard that, uh, from a few, like, people that, uh, Scott actually had to turn the volume down of the jump scare because, like, so many people were complaining about it. I hadn't... So that means, like, when I played FNAF 4, I had the turn down version. I wonder what the full volume up version will be like. I want to try that out if I can get my hands on the... Uh, alpha version of FNAF 4, that would be awesome. Maybe I can get the extra exclusive snake tongue jump scare from Nightmare Foxy that he has with the snake tongue thing, if you know, you know. And, yeah, that's all the FNAF games that I have in here. Uh, let me know if I missed any. I don't think I did. I would probably know if I missed any. Uh... And for FNAF Help Wanted, I didn't count the Dreadbear DLC as separate, only because it's really the same thing. Apart from adding, like, Dreadbear and, like, four other games in there that doesn't bring a whole lot of lore or whatever. Only, the like, the Vanny Mask and, like, the gl Glitch Trap expands, and that's really it. So, that's all still Help Wanted. Uh, but yeah, that's my FNAF list. Uh, what'd you think of that? Uh... I was originally gonna edit this video into, like, a, 
like a more f refined version. Like I was gonna like make this m look more like it had more effort in it, but nah, I just like show this entire screen for the whole thing. Uh, so yeah. Uh, thank you for watching, and I'll see you later. Goodbye. This had I was originally gonna make this video effortful, but I decided not to. I just made this video because it was because it was on my list of what videos to make. So yeah, later.